Hi there guys, welcome once again to Jonesy's vlog. It's another Sunday and once again I find myself uh, recording a reaction video to uh, to a Legion United game and just being not knowing what to say and just being disappointed again. Um should point out obviously it was it was down at Watford yesterday so uh, I couldn't get to this game, I was working. So everything I'm going off is uh, by what people have told me that we're at the game and obviously by the highlights that I saw last night and uh, from what journalists have said. By all accounts, it started off pretty well, uh, you know, according to uh, uh, Cammy, Chris Kamara on, on Sky Sports, on the, sorry, Gillette Soccer Saturday, um, he said that we were sort of controlling the game really without pressing or creating any chances. Uh, we we weren't letting Watford sort of get hold of the ball and um, you know not letting them you know into the game. Uh, Watford took the lead through very slack defending really by the looks of it. Um, it was uh, it seemed really poor and, and the way Forest area was just kind of pretty much unmarked in the box. Obviously he got a bit of luck with the fact that his his first shot deflected back off Sylvester straight to him. Um, but like I say, overall, none of the defenders seemed to react. Uh, you know, none of the Leeds players reacted to to this. They just came, seemed to be standing watching on. Um, and also, we got back back into the game uh, through an own goal. Uh, a good good cross by by Billy Sharp, and uh, and put into his uh, to his own net. I can't remember who it was. But um, yeah, like I said, by all accounts, we are we seem to be. You know, challenging in the game and and making a good sort of go at it, but then again, by all accounts, Watford didn't seem that up for the game. I mean, it sounds like they've kind of been having their own problems off the field. Uh, apparently, the reports of players not sort of getting on with their manager or something and not wanting to play for him. So whether that was any part of their performance yesterday, but. Um, like I said, apparently they they weren't brilliant to uh, uh, to put it politely. Um, so the fact that we were just kind of in and around the game and still not creating chances, you know, isn't really the greatest sort of summary of, of our performance. Uh, so into the second half, we were still in the game, and then a awful mistake really from uh, from Belusky on his uh, debut. Completely misjudged the ball that was coming through, um, letting their their attacker, and you know a lot of people have been saying there was very minimal contact, um, but from what I've seen and the highlights I've seen, you know there was contact. You know you can clearly see him, you know bring his arm sort of out against the player. As soon as you do that, and as soon as you're the last defender, there's always just you know there's only going to be one one outcome there. So for me. You know, I've got absolutely no arguments whatsoever. You know, with the red card, with the penalty, uh, and that's when we seem to hit the self-destruct button. Um, obviously, the the penalty was scored. Um, then they got the third Forestry area again. Uh, you know, good play from him, but again, just slack defending. I mean, there were so many lazy tackles put in there. I mean, I saw Austin, his attempt of a tackle. I have no idea what that was. Um, and all the other players, you know, there were so many white shirts in front of him. You thought there's no way he's going to score from here, and of course he did. Um, so you know that was that. The free kick, the scored from. There seemed to be no wall in place for the free kick. I mean, it must have been what 30, 30 yards out, probably more. And it was just like a, a free, a free shot at goal for that. I mean, you know, well struck, really well struck. Uh, you know, left Sylvester with no chance, but. Surely just having a two, three man wall there would have taken that option out. I mean, he had the whole goal to aim for. So, whoever's idea that was, whether it was the players, Silvestri's, the Hawks, I have no idea. But whoever, you know, someone wasn't thinking there. Um, and then obviously Byram getting sent off for a, a off camera incident, off the ball incident. So, I haven't seen it. It was meant to have been an elbow, but, you know, I, I can't comment on that. Um, so, like I say, we hit the self-destruct button, and from that moment on, it, apparently it just uh, it just kept kept getting worse and worse. It says a lot about Hockaday being out of his depth. You know, we went two one down. Yes, we were down to ten men, but when you're two one down in a match, I don't care whether you're down to ten men or whatever, you should be going all out just to get that equaliser. So to bring off Billy Sharp and bring on Cooper. 
it's just madness. I cannot get my head around that. You know, The Hawk tried to defend it by saying he believed that Antolucci um, could could get the goal. Well, he's, he's literally been in the country, what, a couple of days, been at the club a couple of days, uh, you know, still obviously gelling with the rest of the team and getting used to English football. Leaving him up front on his own, thinking he might get a goal and rescue the point for us, is just the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. We should have just gone all out, because at least if we try and attack and go all out, it doesn't, you know, we ended up losing 4 1 anyway. So it doesn't matter if you go all out when you're down to 10 men and just, you know, put everything, you know, into attack and just try and get a goal back. If, if you end up losing 3 4 1, at least you say you've had a go at it. But to go so defensive is just. I, you know, it kind of just sums up, you know, Hocker Day and his tactics and everything for me. So, I really couldn't get my head around that one. A lot of the fans said that we were in the game up until the sending off, um, which, you know, if that is the case, then um, it just shows what, I don't know, I mean, it, it was kind of said before we were getting Belushi, you know, there was that those pictures going around of him doing silly challenges and you know very you know high footed challenges and everything you know we brought him in he's got a red card on his debut Berardi came in he got a red card on his debut you know are we are we bringing all these you know over the top Italians in that we can rely on I mean I know it's hard to go off one game but I don't know I um I'd say it was a poor mistake from him in the first place to mis misjudge that ball so poorly and and like I say, whether it was minimal contact or not, he did make the contact and he made it too obvious and like I say there was absolute no you know, no argument from me on it and I just hope that we haven't bought two two defenders to to the team that are just gonna be a liability and getting sent off for the rest of the season. But moving on to the fact that uh there's a lot of reports that um Hockaday has left the club or will be leaving the club. Um you know, a lot of journalists saying they'll be very surprised if he's in charge for the Bradford game. And I think it, you know, it, it proved yesterday uh, just what a shambles it all is, really, at the club. Um, and but, but the thing that really worries me about this, you know, everyone's saying, oh, yes, let's get rid of the hock and everything. And, you know, that should make everything better. But I'm not sure that it will. Not because, you know, I... I he shouldn't have been here in the first place. I mean, I said it from the very start. You know, he clearly should not have been in charge from the first place. We've given him a chance, and he's proved through the matches so far that tactically, he it's just he's so out of his depth. It is untrue. It's unbelievable. Um, you know, he, he part of me, part of me. I mean, a little part of me does feel sorry for him. I mean, yes, you know, he didn't have to say yes to the job, but, you know, you've got a big club like that asking you to, to be your coach. You know, the majority of people are not going to turn it down, are they? Um, but, you know, for me, the, the whole Hocker Day thing, I'm not necessarily blaming him over. I, that's fully down to Cellino for bringing him in. What he was thinking, I really don't have a clue. I really do not know. Um, so, for me, getting rid of Hocker Day is not going to solve anything for me personally. Because I don't see how we're going to move forward. I don't see... Well, one, we know Cholino wants a head coach. And someone that he can, you know, sort of pub here about. And looking out there at all the sort of candidates, candidates, I don't know who is going to accept sort of just being a coach at the club. And I can't see who's going to accept being involved at a club where they're not in full control of the team and the transfers. You know, people are talking about big names like Malky Mackay, who uh, I wouldn't want anyway after recent things, um, Tony Pulis, uh, you know, big big names like that. You really think Tony Pulis is going to come to Leeds United and be controlled by Massimo Cellino after he's just left Crystal Palace because he wasn't in full control of the transfers there? It's not going to happen. And he's not. He's he's going to want to be a manager. He's going to want to manage the team, but he's not. He's going to be the coach. So you look at the coaches that are out there. You know, for me, maybe the only one that would work for me would be possibly Gary McAllister. 
but I don't like the idea of going back and going back to you know old managers and everything. You know, I believe that McAllister would be quite happy just to be a coach. And yes, you know, we did play some good football under him when when he was at the club, and maybe just being a coach would suit him more than being a manager. But again, I just I cannot see that happening. And the one thing that really worries me, and I was discussing this with with a friend last night, and he made the good point that you know to 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 make something of yourself at the club you're going to have to make an immediate impact and you know an immediate impact to impress Chilino and for me that is such an impossible task when we have such a massive squad at the moment you know we've got so many players that we need to really offload but not only is it a massive squad it is so unbalanced you know at the moment we have a really unbalanced squad so for a coach to come in and try and coach that for me it's it's going to be impossible to make an impact to make that you know initial impact and just by getting rid of like I say about just by getting rid of Hockaday and the coach I, I can't see a way forward and it. it's really worrying you know I think it proves just how what a big hole and what a big mess that we're in right now and apparently it's been reported this morning that Cellino, uh you know is kind of wanting to get rid of Hockaday but is worried because he would have Redfern in caretaker charge for Wednesday, but he has no one round him to help him. Well, whose fault's that, Massimo? Uh, Naylor's gone, Bromby's gone, you know, Nigel Gibbs has gone, the majority of the backroom staff's gone. Whose fault was that? Was that Hockaday's or was that yours? He's got us in such a massive mess. Um, and it's hard to see, like I say, it's really hard to see a way forward. So we're going to have to see what the next few days, uh, you know, delivers. Whether it's today or tomorrow we're here, if the Hawks are gone or not. Um, nobody knows, there are meant to be emergency meetings being held. Like I say, whether it's today or tomorrow, I really don't know. Um, so it's probably going to be a case that Redfern will be in charge for the, the game on Wednesday against Bradford. And I mean, the way things are, I mean... If anyone's positive going into that game, then I'll be amazed. Uh, you know, I, although I am looking forward to it for the sort of the occasion, the fact that it's going to be my, my first trip to uh, um, to Valley Parade, uh, and, and as a Leeds fan, I'll, I'll get onto that when I do uh, do a video for uh, for the Bradford game. Uh, but it's a, sort of a big occasion for me anyway. Uh, but you know, I, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to the atmosphere and everything. But as far as the game and the team goes, like I say, and like I've been saying since pre-season, I'm not particularly excited or looking forward to it, really. Um, and just... <laughs> as you can tell by my sort of demeanour and, and my manner, it's just... It really is just such a mess. And it's, uh, it's not good, but we'll just have to see where that goes. So that's all from me anyway, guys. Um, you know, let me know your thoughts if you were at the game yesterday, if you were at Watford. Then, uh, then let me know from uh, you know your own point of view, how it was, if it was um, you know the massive self destruct um, that that people were saying it was. Um, your thoughts on you know the big decisions in the game, and of course your thoughts on the hot going. And if you do see a way of going forward, um, you know your candidates, your idea of, of of candidates for for the next manager or the next coach, should I say? And just do bear that in mind because you know tons of people are going to be you know looking at big name managers but like I say Chilino wants a coach so these big managers are not going to come and I imagine Chilino is not going to fork out tons of money for these people either so you know try and be a bit realistic in your ideas and you know just think about it a little bit because like I say I can't think of an ideal candidate for it so that's all from me guys uh, leave your ideas uh, and your thoughts in the comments below or at my Twitter at Chris Jones LUFC. As always, thank you very much for watching and I will see you all very soon.